Hello everyone, welcome to our review of the carbon cycle and oxygen cycle for Unit 3. You're going to be examining and learning about the ways that carbon exists in the living and non-living environments. Non-living ways include in the form of carbon dioxide, carbonic acids, carbonate rocks, deposits of fossil fuels, and also dead organic matter. You're going to be reviewing your essential vocabulary terms for cellular respiration, photosynthesis, carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle, and also some forms of organic carbon, such as the hydrocarbons, carbohydrates. I hope you had a lot of those yummy carbohydrates today. And your inorganic carbon, such as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, and again, calcium carbonates. When you're reviewing this lesson, it's important to consider the ways that carbon enters and leaves the atmosphere. As you know, the carbon takes a trip through most of all of Earth's spheres and becomes a building block of life. For instance, entering the atmosphere, carbon moves through vol action of the volcanism, respiration, burning of biomass, and also weathering. It leaves the atmosphere through the process of photosynthesis by plant and plant like organisms, through the deposition of sediment, through the burial of different biomasses, and through also the sequestration of carbon in our seas and seawaters. Carbon, again, is a foundation for the matter that makes up all living organisms and how it moves through the environment in specific cycles. For instance, in the carbon cycle, the carbon moves from inorganic carbon dioxide to organic molecules and back again in a constant cycle called photorespiration. And through the process of the interconnection between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, carbon moves along the atmosphere, the biosphere, the geosphere, and the hydrosphere on Earth. And it's very closely related to the cycling of oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. These diagrams that are showing how atmosphere carbon is stored in aquatic biomass, in the lithosphere, in fuel, fossil fuel emissions, through the biosphere, and through stored in the ocean and through marine deposits are some of the ways that carbon is sequestered and transferred through the biospheres. Now the carbon reserves again are found in our Earth's atmosphere, in our Earth's biosphere, in the oceans, the lithosphere, and also in gaseous form in our cryosphere. carbon cycle connects producers and consumers in the biosphere through photorespiration, through the process of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. This is a very simplified diagram that's showing as the producers take in carbon dioxide, they are building organic compounds which are utilized by many life forms. Through the process of cellular respiration, the CO2 is released, reused again, and then a byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen, which is utilized for life, to many forms of life, to have cellular respiration occur, thus producing energy for life. So again, during photosynthesis, a plant will release oxygen and use carbon dioxide as a building block for carbohydrates. And oxygen is used by the consumers, which is in turn released, releases carbon dioxide and again enters the cycle of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. This carbon cycle is intricately balanced and one of the largest reserves of carbon on the earth is within our oceans. Again, recall that ocean dwelling organisms such as coral and some shellfish have hard body parts which are their shells are made of calcium carbonate. As these organisms die, 
that contain the calcium carbonate, they settle to the ocean floor, and the sedimentary rocks may form some deposits on the open floor, or excuse me, on the ocean floor, and these chemical sedimentary rocks that form limestone is one of the largest carbon reserves on our whole, on our planet. Again, in the carbon cycle, carbon must be released back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. And natural processes from the geosphere also release, release carbon back into the atmosphere, such as the burning of, of forests through uh, actions of volcanism, through the burning of fossil fuels, are all ways that carbon dioxide re-enters the geosphere. One important thing is knowing about the resonant time of carbon in the atmosphere. It helps us to have a, a deeper understanding about the carbon cycle. This concept of resonant time includes the following. That as you're considering carbon in the atmosphere, carbon in vegetation, carbon is being fueled, bull, uh, burned as a fossil fuel or in cement production, carbon that's present in the surface of our oceans or in the deep ocean or in buried sediment or even in our soils all have different resonant time, meaning how long is that carbon going to be present in the vegetation, in the atmosphere, in fossil fuel burning, in our ocean, resonant time. So again, it's referring for how long the carbon stays in one place. And one example it talks about is carbon typically stays in the atmosphere for a few decades. That is, after about 30 or 40 years, a plant will use the atmospheric carbon during further synthesis. And carbon again circulates in the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere. And carbon molecules in the hydrosphere may take 100,000 100, years to re-enter the carbon cycle. So you can see how this is very important when you're considering the concept of global warming. Let's review the carbon cycle one more time. Plants and animals release carbon dioxide as cellular respiration. Plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and other plant-like organisms such as algae do as well. Burning of fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide. All the cells of living things on the Earth's surface contain carbon. And when dead organisms break down through the process of microbial action, carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. The cells of sea life contain carbon. Some of their body parts, such as hard calcium carbonate shell, contain carbon. Decomposing sea life releases carbon dioxide. And lastly, carbon dioxide dissolved in water can disperse into the atmosphere. Remember, it can also dissolve in the surface water. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the carbon cycle and that as you are reviewing the carbon cycle and its impact on life, that you will focus again on the ways that it's released into the atmosphere through respiration, through decay, through combustion, production of cement, the ocean uh, releasing and volcanic eruptions. Thank you and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to give me a k-mail or call and don't forget that our class connects and our small groups are held on Tuesday through Thursday 10 through 12 and Monday 10 30 p.m. Open office hour 8 30 to 9. Thanks Enjoy this unit.